Yeah, well done. Share my screen. Can we see it? Yeah, ready? Yeah. Hello, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this week's BizSmart Lunch and Learn webinar. We run, we run weekly webinars they to provide advice and share knowledge on key business topics and specialist areas. Joining me today is BizSmart Select Member Dave Paget from Page IT Solutions. And in today's webinar, Dave will be discussing how an IT health check is necessary to ensure the correct implication of IT systems and net networks. Dave, would you like to tell us more about the work that you do? Yes. Um, afternoon, everybody. Um, yep, Dave from Page IT. Um, we are based in Worcester and Bromsgrove. And in essence, we provide IT services and solutions. And that means anything from your break fix, so broken machine, broken laptop, to container contracts, to server um, installations and support, 24-7 monitoring of business critical systems, cloud solutions, etc. But we also get involved in lots of other interesting things like strategy. Um, so we work with a lot of companies where we sit down and ask, you know, what, what you're going to be doing with your business or where, where does your business want to go in the next three years? And we have a conversation and I put, I put a, a plan and a, and a uh, solution together that meets their requirements. Sure. Great, thank you very much. So before we start um, our webinar, can I ask you if you have any questions for Dave, if you can post them on the site using the question mark function and then Dave will answer all of them at the end of the session. Thank you very much. So um, what I wanted to um, sort of talk about today is really the importance of monitoring your business critical systems. Now, that could be, you know, from my side, that's your, that's your data and your systems that enable your company to function. Um, but to you guys, it could be, you know, your laptop because that's all you use. And if that breaks down or fails, dies, you know, your, your business stops. Um, we can look at strategic plans and put something in place. Um, but if you don't have anything in place at the moment, then, you know, your business is at, is at risk. And that's what we try to reduce. Um, by putting things in place, and, and they're just they're just simple things really. And the five things, five subjects I've chose to sort of mention is is a little bit about your network infrastructure. You know, do you have a backup and disaster recovery plan? Um, security measures, you know, passwords and and, and things like that. A firewall, for example. Um, antivirus and anti-spam, and um, obviously um, data data encryption as well. Um, I'm going to run through these fairly quickly, obviously, because we've only got 20 minutes um, as far as the webinar goes. Um, so it's really just a, a general overview um, of things I'd recommend and, may, and maybe you guys could implement at all. Um, so network infrastructure. So what do I mean by a network infrastructure? Basically, network infrastructure is the backbone to your, to your network. Um, it's the bits that connect your your laptop, your PC, to the internet, to your server, um, to your data in, in effect. So you know, if you're a, a one-man band, you have a laptop, and you've got a wireless connection that keeps dropping out, for example, then obviously that's causing you downtime, and um, it could be you know, it could be anything really from a, a dodgy network card in your machine to, um, to a router. But more importantly, it could be um, somebody's put something on your machine without you even knowing about it. And while you're working away on your Word document, they're actually um, hacking into your machine in the background and, um, and you know, doing, doing naughty things. Um, the second part of your infrastructure, which is quite important, are things like network switches. Um, the amount of times I've walked into uh, businesses where they've got a bit of cable daisy chain to what's called a switch or a hub, and um, the amount of downtime they get when, you know, somebody switches one of those off and, and the whole network dies. And, um, you know, it, again, it affects your business, it affects your productivity and you get downtime. Potentially, you know, worst case scenario is somebody unplugs one of these little switches and it corrupts your database um, because there's lots of people logged into it at the same time. So, it's, again, it's, it's trying to reduce that risk. And the way to do that is obviously put some structured data cabling into um, central location with one switch rather than a number of them data chain. And then... The third part you need to think about are things like routers and firewalls and make sure they've got the latest 
patches and firmware updates on them. Um, you know, make sure that, that all the ports in the firewall, I'm getting technically, which I didn't mean to, but the ports on your firewall, make sure that most of them are closed. You only need a certain number open to um, send and receive email, for example. Um, make sure they're all closed so nobody can get in and, um, and log into your systems and hack in, into those. Um, so that's that's really um, one thing. That's the that's starting point, really, is your network infrastructure. Because if, if you haven't got one of those and you have, Know, dodgy cables or dodgy connections um, then obviously you're not going to uh, you're not going to be able to function as a business um, efficiently in a sense um, so let me move on to backup and disaster recovery one of one of my favorite subjects um, only because you know I've been working in IT um, some people might say far too long but a very long time and the amount of um, companies I go to that don't really have a, a backup um, plan, let alone the disaster recovery plan, and they think they're backing up all their important stuff to a disk. Um, but there are, there are a load of scenarios I could talk about, which I won't do, where I've been in situations where the servers died or a hard disk has failed. Um, the customer has been putting their tape in their machines or their hard their USB hard disk in their machines religiously every day, but not checking that the backup's actually running. So when the server breaks, and they asked me to go in to recover their data, and I can't. Um, all you know, all hell breaks loose. Now, the worst one was um, customers lost 12 years' data um, on their from their archive server. They thought they were backing up, and they lost literally everything. And when they walked in one morning, they could hear a high pitched squeal, couldn't understand what it was, and it was the heads that crashed on the hard drive and lost everything. Um, another scenario was we'd been recommending this this company upgraded their um, their tape drive to go back a few years um, to a larger capacity one because we couldn't get everything everything onto one tape and they didn't and they would switch the server off one Saturday morning to move into a different location and the thing didn't come back on they lost eight months worth of data all everything that what I mean by data is things like you know invoicing purchase orders their management system didn't work lost all their word excel everything absolutely everything do their business for eight months they lost um, so it doesn't seem to um, matter how many times I say to people you need a decent backup um, solution that's you know that you need to test. Um, I mean, how many of you guys today have actually tested your backup or even looked at it to make sure it's working? You know, try to restore data. Um, you know, it, it's it's really really important that you have a, a backup solution, and there's obviously part of that backup solution is um, is, a, is a DR plan, a disaster recovery plan. So. For example, you know, if your building was to burn down, how would your business function? You know, what would you do? Do you take data off site? Do you have a USB hard disk or do you have cloud based backup solutions? So if your building was to burn down, you could go and work somewhere somewhere else and um, fairly quickly. You know, I, I'm, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but, you know, my business pays my bills, you know, and pays my salary. If I didn't have that, um, you know, how would I pay my mortgage? That sort of, that type of thing. I mean, that is a, Bit of a scaremongery sort of thing to say, but it is really that that important. And um, you know, this is why I keep emphasising the fact that uh, you need to back up your data because you can replace hardware and the operating system, but you can't replace your data. And um, you know, there's lots and lots of products out there, fairly cheap, and um, you know, and obviously we can manage that for you. But um, you know. So I'll, I'll, I'll move on from that because I get, I get a bit carried away with the backup and disaster recovery because it is really, really important. The next thing I wanted to mention was um, security. And again, this is quite um, quite an important area in, in that more and more, I mean, you're on the news every day, really, more and more people are getting hacked. Um, you know, you must have heard of about a, of a few people who have had money stolen out of their bank because they've clicked on something in an email, not thought anything about it. And um, then done a bit of internet banking later on in the day, and the Internet Explorer opens and it's a false page, and what they're busily typing in their username, and the password, and their, and their passcodes on their on their little pads that they get from the bank. There's somebody watching them um, in the in the background, and by the time they've tried a number of times, then found the bank, the person's logged in in the back end and um, and taken the money. Now, I don't know if you. Um, if you know this, but you know the, the pin sentry devices that you have where you put the card in and then you type in that code, those that code is, is active for about 90 seconds. 
Um, so, you know, that gives a guy 90 seconds to basically take your information and um, log on because it's all cloud based, log on somewhere else and, uh, and use it. So it is um, important that, uh, you, you know, you are aware of this. Um, the other things you, you need to do, and I keep coming across it lots of times, is, is passwords. You know, pe the amount of people who still use the word password in various shapes and forms as their standard password for everything. Um, you know, it's, it, it's, um, it's unbelievable, really, but uh, you, you still keep coming across it. And I always recommend that you change your passwords every three months and don't have one password for absolutely everything. Um, it, might, it, might, it might seem like a bit of a... A pain, or you're not going to remember this, you're not going to remember that, but you know, write it in a little box somewhere and, and keep it keep it safe. Um, again, you know, the, the, the easier the password is, or you know, it, it, it's just again your it's your livelihoods really. And um, there are so many simple ways um, that you can stop people from hacking into your systems and um, you know, taking your data, taking your money. Um, I mean, it'll take, think about how quickly it is to log into your bank. You know, it takes less than a minute, I suppose. And if somebody's got that information ready and available to them just by sending you a, a, a dodgy email and because you don't have any antivirus software on your machine or you have a free antivirus product that isn't checking for those type of things, you know, it is really, really simple um, to get into things. Um, and talking about antivirus and anti-spam in a second but um, as part of this security measures you know you need to get a decent um, antivirus product that will scan for viruses but it also scans for things like malware and um, and all, the, all the, the horrible little things that come through via email or when you're browsing um, a website the things that download in the background that the free software doesn't pick up um, you know you, you need to uh, get, get something um, that you, that you pay for that generally does pick those type of things up. Um, so yeah, I'll move on to um, antivirus and anti-spam. So the old antivirus products, um, you know, there's, there's loads of products on the market, um, and we come come across this um, all the time. And the, fr the free ones are great for spotting viruses, but they only tend to pick them up if you run an antivirus gun on your machine or if you download, literally download something from the internet with a, with a file attached, what they don't tend to do is pick up the uh, the hidden links and the hidden um, trojans and things like that that come through email or um, from the toolbars, for example, on uh, in, in your Internet Explorer or your Google Chrome. Um, toolbars basically are, are malware. They, um, they monitor everything, <clears throat> everything that you do and um, send all that information off to some bloke with very small eyes in a darkened room who will then generate a load of spam email and then um, and attach lots of nasty things to it and then send them out to the world. Um, you know, the, the these things with cookies, you know, they track everything that you do. And um, you, you know, my 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 advice would be to remove all your toolbars. Um, you know, that you've got, I think it's Ask, Bing, Google. Um, there's all sorts of weird and wonderful things out there that will uh, stick a toolbar on your Internet Explorer and generate, um, you know, spam, malware, advertising. You know, every time you open up Internet Explorer, it takes you off to to a different page. You know, all that type of things. We've all experienced it. Um, you know, you've got a little Trojan on your machine um, that you're unaware of, and your anti, you know, that your free version of your antivirus software isn't picking it up. Um, I mean, I was, I'll, I'll give you a quick scenario. Um, I went to a client of mine who we'd just taken on board. We went and did a uh, site survey and a health check. And then we're getting, every time they logged onto their network, each machine was getting 128 network connections, which basically meant they couldn't log onto the, um, onto the server. And they were, they were using a free product. We ran a scan, didn't pick up anything. We removed that free product and put our product on there, which is ESET run a scan and it picked up around 300 little Trojans, malware, viruses and things like that. Around the 300 mark, it was just going forever. Um, we then removed all the bad stuff off their laptops and they've never had a problem since. Um, so obviously, as a solution, we removed all their, their free antivirus stuff from there, off the machines, put ESET on there, um, and they've never had a problem since. And, um, and it's just, again, a, a sim simple way to protect... You know, protect you guys. You know, you don't want 
um, thousand and one emails, you know, um, unless you have a, a spam solution, which which is picking them up. But not a lot of um, businesses do. Um, and we use um, we use two two anti spam products. One is a hosted one, um, which you know if you're not using Office three six five or, or Google, you know you've got your own email server, for example. You know we can we can get the spam email before it actually gets to your server, um, which removes ninety nine percent of the of the junk, so only the good stuff comes through. But again, you know you still get that one percent where you uh, where where you potentially could get a um, a bad email. Um, and things like browsing the internet, you know you have to be a little bit conscious that as soon as you have have connected your machine to the internet, there will be somebody out there trying to get into getting your to, put your teeth in, can get into your machine. We'll be trying to hack your system. You know, it is it is um, a fact of life now that every time you connect to the internet, there'll be something out there trying to get onto your machine without, um, without you knowing. So, yeah, the, the, the moral of the story is um, obviously buy, buy some antivirus software and, um, and pay your subscriptions and uh, hopefully your, uh, your life will be uh, a little bit easier and you'll be a lot more protected. Um, and last but not least, um, I'll put this in here, um, data encryption, because it's something that we've been talking about really for the last six months. We've got a lot of our customers. Um, really, it, it came from um, you know client data. If you if you have a, a, a due diligence and compliance and um, things like that, really, um, and if you have um, if you have uh, a laptop or a PC that you're going outside of the office, and um, you are traveling around, and you have um, you, know, you have client information on your machine. You really do need that laptop encrypted. Simple reason is, if that laptop is lost or you you leave it somewhere, it's so easy to get the data off it. And what I mean by that is, you can you know somebody picks up a laptop whip the hard drive out, put it into a little cradle, they can get access to the data. If the disk is corrupted, then, um, oh, sorry, if the disk is encrypted, then they can't get to that data. And that also goes for things like um, you know, USB sticks and external USB drives. You know, a, way, a good way of protecting a, a company data is to um, get a product which will encrypt, encrypt your laptop and will only allow encrypted um, USB sticks or, or external USB drives to be used in, in that machine. So, for example, if you if you got a um, person working for you who leaves, you know, and he's got all his company data on his USB stick, he's not going to be able to read it at home on his machine because the um, USB stick's encrypted. That's one way to protect yourselves. I know we've all got contracts in place and things like that, but if a person leaves your company and wants to take your data, you know, it, it's too late. You know, once you get on that USB stick, you know, there's not a lot you can do about it in, in reality. Um, and um, it's a good way of protecting yourselves. But also, um, you know, if you're working for doing work for say like the NHS, or you have, you know, working for the healthcare industry, for example, and you have client information and you're travelling around, you know, you do need to encrypt your laptop so nobody can get access to that uh, your, your, that data. Um, it's all it's all compliance stuff. And um, and really, I, I guess um, am I running out of uh, rapidly, I think, running out of time, so I will um, stop talking and uh, answer answer the questions if there are any. Let's have a look. Great, thank you very much, Dave. That's a uh, um, that's a very interesting session. You've had uh, a number of questions come through. Let's start with a question from Lucy. Um, why do I need a server? All my data, etc., is on my laptop and is backed up on a USB drive. Um, okay, well. Um, you don't necessarily need a server as such, but you do need somewhere to, to sort of store all that data in that. Um, I'll give you a scenario. Uh, quite recently, um, a company rings me up. He's got Sage running. He's got his two, sorry, three businesses running on Sage on a laptop. And it doesn't back it up. Um, not regularly anyway. He's got a copy somewhere on a USB drive. Uh, it rings you up in a panic because the hard disk has become corrupt. Um, and if he loses that Sage data, he's, you know, his business, well, his three businesses are, um, well, they wouldn't be in a very good place. So if if it's just a single um, user with a laptop, my recommendation is 
get an external hard disk. You know, you can buy one that you can plug into your machine. They're about 100 quid and run the Windows backup software, which will create an image of your whole laptop and put it onto that, that NAS drive. I mean, if you need any help with that, obviously, you know, give, give me a call. Um, but it's really, really simple to do. The tools are there for you guys to uh, and for you guys to use. Um, you know, it's not necessarily going to buy a big piece of metal running Windows 2012 server. You, you know, you don't necessarily need to spend that amount of money. But a hundred pounds on a NAS drive, and then create an image of your laptop on a regular basis, um, will help and obviously reduce that risk to you. Great, thank you very much. Um, Simon has asked, um, if I put a password on my laptop, is my data now secure? Um, not not really. Um, if you've just got a password on your machine, okay, and, um, you know, and I want to get into that machine, all I've got to do is literally take the hard drive out, um, whip the hard disk out, put it into a cradle, which you can go and buy a fee for 20 quid, plug it into your USB socket on a machine, and, you know, you've got access to that hard drive. If it's encrypted, different story. You can't get access to the data because obviously you won't be able to read it. But if it's an unencrypted drive with a password, just as you boot it up, you know you can get into that hard disk. So uh, no, your data is not not secure at all. Okay, thank you. So following on from that question, then, how do you recommend managing passwords in a way um, that is practical? So many things need passwords. Um, don't want to write down hundreds of passwords but equally don't want to have the same password for everything okay i i have um five passwords which i um which i rotate um they're all capital letters you know um strange characters and numbers and things like that they're all a minimum of eight characters long um now I, I tend to um rotate those and the simple reason reason i have five is because generally after three attempts at logging in anything you get kicked out and you've got to wait five minutes. Um, and then every three every three months, I tend to um, scrap them and, and, and start again. Um, but at the end of the day, um, you know, you don't want a separate, you, you don't need a separate password for every single thing. But if you have a, a core password set of, say, five, then uh, that usually, um, you can, a you, well, you, a, you can usually remember them, and B, as long as they're completely different, then, Again, it reduces your risk. But, you know, people say, oh, it's a pain or, you know, I can't do that. I can't, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. It, you know, it's entirely up to you. You know, it's your, it's your data. I mean, how, how important is your is your data? You know, that's that's the thing you need to think about. And if five minutes writing them on a, in, in a little box somewhere, then, um, you know, I don't, I don't see what they, the, the, the problem is, if I'm honest. But that's just me. <laughs> Thank you. Um uh, a question now from Paul. Um, can you recommend any of the free antivirus products? If not, what is a good low-cost option for an SME? Okay, we I don't recommend uh, any any of the free products, um, only because I've been bitten that many times by them. And um, we only use a product called um, ESET, ESET Nod32. Um, it's really really cheap. Um, it's about I think it's one PC is about fifty pounds for three years subscription or something like that, or one year subscription. Um, depending on what you need. Um, we've used it now for three years. Um, we've used it on small projects and, and really large ones, and it's, it picks everything up. Um, you know, it, it's a quite a sophisticated product as well. So I'd, I'd always recommend ESET. That's E-S-E-T. And, um, yeah, it's good. Right, thank you. A couple of questions from Liz. Um, if all my data is in the cloud in Google Drive, mm -hmm. um, does that mean I don't need to get my laptop encrypted? Um, well, does your Google Drive sync? If your Google Drive syncs with your machine, so say you have an offline copy on your hard disk, then um, I'd still recommend um, in encrypting it. If it doesn't, then then probably not. You don't need to. As long as your passwords are secure, and you have, and, and you know, and um, if we did get onto your hard drive by taking out your laptop, as long as they're not written down anywhere in, a, in a, like a text file. Um, so, for example, you know, I, I come across your laptop, I can get access to your hard drive, I start looking through all your files, and there's a password.txt file there, for example. I open it, and there's your password. Then um, you know you don't need it encrypting. Um, but obviously, if you've got anything like that or anything that could um, suggest passwords to to me mr mr hacker then um 
yeah, I would definitely recommend getting encrypted. I mean, it, it, the encryption software isn't that expensive, so um, I would always recommend getting your hard drive encrypted anyway. Okay, thank you. She also asked, if your business is dependent on one laptop, mm -hmm. what would you suggest as a disaster recovery plan? Are there people who will rent out a temporary laptop while you wait for your insurance provider to get to buy a new one? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we provide, as part of our maintenance contracts, you know, we, we provide loan equipment. Um, there's lots of other companies out there that provide loan equipment or you can rent a laptop. Um, you know, and the, the, the key thing is you're getting your, your data. If, if you're using Google Drive or, or Microsoft OneDrive or whatever product Dropbox, for example, um, and it's really, really simple to, to set up. You know, we, we, we log you in, we log in, log you on to Dropbox, download all your data and things like that. So that's, that's really simple. So yeah, in, in answer to your question, there are people out there who, who would rent you a, a laptop. The only thing is, you know, are you happy with setting it up or would you want somebody else to do that for you? Whereas we, we would do both. We would lend you the, the machine and um, and configure it for you as well. Great, thank you. Um, another question from um, Philip. Is cloud backup suitable for very large files, such as video source files, several gigabytes in size? Um, the cloud backup solutions at the moment that, that are around are, are quite sophisticated. Um, we're, we're looking at um, a project for one of our clients where they produce a lot of videos and um, they, they broadcast and stream and things like that. Now, you can, um, basically the backups, what, what they, the way the, the cloud backup works is we would take a complete backup of what you've currently got, send that off to the data center. And then the way the backup then runs, it, it, it looks, without getting too technical, it looks for all the change files and then it, it goes to the next level and, and takes a bit lock. But it looks at every bit of that file. Um, and copies that bit. It doesn't copy the whole file, it just copies the changed bits of the file, if that makes any sense, to the cloud. Um, so you're not uploading gigabits of data, you're just uploading small chunks of that one file to the cloud, which is basically the changed parts, and the software will detect um, which part of that file has changed and, uh, and upload only the, the, the changed parts, if, if that makes any sense. I hope I'm making sense without getting too technical about it. Right. Thank you very much. Um, we've had some great questions come through, so thank you all for that. If you have any more questions for Dave, if you'd like to post them on the forum page in the crew room, um, I'm sure he will uh, do his best to answer those. I'll be sending out a copy of um, today's presentation to you all very shortly, but thank you again for joining us, and I hope that you make our Lunch and Learn webinars a regular slot in your calendars every Tuesday at 12.30. Have a great afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us.